of circles and arcs. Now we're going to dive into specific pieces of circles and arcs. So the first thing we're going to dive into is a chord. All right, so this front and back page is all just about a chord and its properties. So we already learned in the last notes that a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. So, the chord's theorem to start says that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if, remember that's that if with a double F, okay? So, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So, what that means is that arc F, G... This arc can be congruent to this arc, HJ, only if their chords are also congruent, and vice versa. So if the chords are congruent, you can say their arcs are congruent. Okay, so you can work backwards and forwards there. All right? So in figure... In these figures, circle J is congruent to circle K. So we're telling you, you have two congruent circles. All right. It also tells you that arc MN is congruent to arc PQ. So what can we do with those two chords if we have congruent arcs by match? Set them equal to each other. So 2X plus 1 equals 3X minus 7. And solve it. What are we going to do first? Add seven. Uh, you can add 7 and also what? 2x. Good. So if your variables go to the right, your constants go to the left. So that's going to give me 8 for x. Is that the final answer it wants? No. What does it want? Yeah, it wants the chord PQ. So PQ equals 3 times 8 minus 7. So what's the length of chord PQ? 17. Questions? Yes. Any other questions? All right. Next theorem states, in the same circle or in congruent circles, again, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So that means FG and JH are congruent if LX, so this right here, is congruent to this right here. So if those distances from the chord to the middle or to the center are congruent then we can state our seg our chords are congruent and vice versa if our chords are congruent we can say they're the same distance from the center okay Ooh, nice. <laughs> All right, found the, find the value of the variables in each of the exercises. So what do we know about the two chords in this picture? They are equal. So if this chord is congruent to this chord, what do we know about the distance to the center? They're equal. So what is x equal? 16. Okay. Any questions there? All right, next one says PR is congruent to TR. So what does that tell us? The chords are congruent, right? So what can we do with the variables then? Good, 5x equals 3x plus 4. We can set them equal. These will also be congruent. So what do we do first? Good. 
And then what? Divide by three. Any questions there? All right, last two theorems. Flip it over. Next theorem about chords. If a diameter or a radius of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arc. So that means if AB is perpendicular to chord XY, which we can see by the box, then XZ is going to be congruent to XY. So it's a perpendicular bisector to both the chord pieces and the arc pieces. <laughs> Yay, they remembered. <laughs> All right. Okay, the next theorem also states that the perpendicular bisector of a chord is a diameter or a radius of the circle. So that means if you've got the coding that um, XZ is congruent to ZY and the arcs are also congruent, that means that AB is going to be perpendicular. Okay? Any questions there? So it really just works backwards and forwards there. Everybody got it? Okay, let's try. So find the value of r to the nearest tenth. So r is my radius. Okay, I've got a distance that's perpendicular. That's 3 centimeters. I've got a chord that's 14 centimeters. So what do we know about that chord if it's got a perpendicular box on it? Going through this, yeah, what's it called? Yeah. Perpendicular. It's 90 yes. So, what do we know about LN and MN? They're congruent. So, how much are each of them? Seven. Seven. And then Very good. Then we can do the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle that's created. So, right triangle. We've got three for this little piece of the diameter. We've got seven for this piece of the chord. And we've got the radius r. So three squared plus seven squared equals r squared. Three squared is? Nine. Seven squared is? 49. Nine plus 49? 58. What do we do now? Square root. So R, what does it want? What do the instructions say? Nearest tenth. So R is approximately, plug that in, how many decimals is the tenth? One. One. Plug it in. Tell me the answer, please. 7.6. 7 7.6. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, it's got units of centimeters, so please make sure you label the units. Any questions on that one? Um, this cord is cut in half because you have a perpendicular bisector there. So it says any radius or diameter that is perpendicular to a cord makes it a bisector. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Next one. Oop. Why did it go back? Okay. This one's a little bit more difficult to see. We want the length of NP. We know that we've got a box in there. So what do we know about NP? They're congruent. So it's being cut in half here and here. How are we going to find it? What do you think? The 9 is this little piece of the radius. The 8 is this little piece of the radius. Okay. So that right angle helps us create what inside here? What would help us? 
Can you put one more? What one more? Like, uh, what is it? Some red notes. And then you can find, like, the length of, uh, of NM. And that would be NM to NX squared. Hmm. I like your thought, but we wouldn't be able to do that because the 90 is not an inscribed angle. What do we have on the previous circle? Yes, very good. So, we can draw a right triangle in here. Okay, we know 8 is this piece. What do we know about all radius, all radii in a circle? They're all congruent. So this radar, radii from R to N is going to be congruent to R to M. So how much is that? 17. So do we know how to find this piece right here? Yes. What would we do to find that little piece of P N? Good. 8 squared plus X squared equals what? 17 squared. So 8 squared is 64. 17 squared? Great question indeed. 289. Subtract. What do you get? 225. Then what? Square root. So what's X equal? 15. Does that give us NP though? No. How much is NP? Double it, right? So we found half of the chord, so the whole chord is 30. So NP equals 30. Any questions there? All right, last one. Okay, it tells us JK equals 10. So the chord equals 10. We've got a diameter that's perpendicular to the chord. So what does that mean? They're congruent. So how much is JQ and KQ? How much are each of these? Five. Ah, good. Five. So this is five. This is 5. What have we drawn on the other two that has helped us? A right triangle. So I'm going to draw a right triangle. Uh, for the perpendicular, yeah. And then how much is that JP? 6. And why is it 6? Because it's the radius, right? And it already told us the radius from P to M was 6. So it doesn't matter where we draw the radius, it's going to be 6. Any questions there? Okay. What do I need to do now? I'm trying to find PQ. Same thing, from Same thing from last time. So this is actually what we were trying to find, right? That right there. Can someone set the equation up for me? Very good. So 5 squared is? 6 squared is? X squared equals? 11. Then what do we do? Square root. So how much is PQ? Square root of 11. Did it tell you to round? No. So you can leave it as square root of 11. Any questions? All right, get to work on the homework.